So the Combine was this past weekend, and with it, a lot of my opinions on these prospects are starting to solidify. And I wanted to make this quick video relatively closely to when the Combine happened in order to talk about the winners of the Combine. I don't want to talk about the losers specifically because I don't really want to be negative right now. So we're just going to talk about the winners. But before we get started, I would like to ask you to like, comment, and subscribe. Help me to get to my goal of 500 subscribers before the end of draft season. We're at like 450 right now, so I feel like that's pretty doable. So without further ado, I would like to say hello and welcome to the JSA Studio. I'm your host, as always, Nathan, and today we're going to be talking about the winners of the Combine. And we're going to start off with guys that I think treaded water. And what do I mean by that? Basically, these are guys that I certainly don't think hurt their draft stock in any real sort of way. But I'm not really convinced that they raised them a whole lot, in my opinion. Now, most of these guys are guys that are probably going to go top 20 or potentially even top 10. And you can't really raise your stock any more than that and that's the case with the first two guys on this list here byron murphy the interior defensive lineman out of texas and layatu latu the edge out of ucla both of those guys are going to at least have top 20 grades maybe even top 10 grades for me when it's all set and done in this upcoming class they didn't show me anything that i didn't see on film now, I did get confirmation on what I saw on film, so that's pretty solid, and I haven't done nearly all of the film work that I need to do on, on those guys. I've kind of been slacking on the defensive side of the ball so far this offseason. Nevertheless, those are two guys that I was already very high on, and uh, they showed me enough athletically and in the field drills to keep my opinion on them being very high. Braylon Trice, the edge out of Washington, he to me was kind of a tweener between the first round and the early second round, and the athletic testing didn't do him any favors, but the tape is still very, very good, and I do like him a lot. I still think he's kind of a fringe first round prospect. However, due to the talent just overall in this draft class, I think this is an exceptionally good draft class especially at like offensive tackle and wide receiver, but also the quarterback class is really, really good. And the running backs, I think, are have become a little bit underrated. And I've heard a lot of good things about the group of corners and nickels and centers as well. I haven't done a whole lot of work on those positions quite yet. But I think overall, this is a exceptionally good draft class. Because of that, I think Braylon Trice probably is going to get pushed down the board a little bit, where in a more average class, he would still be in that fringe first round conversation. After them, I've got the quarterbacks, J.J. McCarthy and Bo Nix out of Michigan and Oregon, respectively. I didn't see anything from J.J. McCarthy that I couldn't see on film. Uh, for what it's worth, he did put on like 20 pounds of muscle. I think he probably played somewhere around 200 or 205, and he came into combine at 220. So he got bigger. He did have the frame to put on that weight and still regain the athleticism. Uh, so that's good to see. And uh, Bo Nix... Um, didn't impress me. Uh, he just didn't in impress me. Uh, basically, I still think he's probably a day two prospect, in my opinion. Although everybody else, including the NFL, seems to be a lot higher on him than I do. I just don't see the upside with him. I think he could probably be a pretty decent starting quarterback in the NFL. Maybe someone like Baker Mayfield or so. Someone who's firmly outside of the top 12, but definitely not a like bad starter. So I think he could be someone like that, but I'm not positive at even that. I, I just don't see the upside with Bo Nix at all. Uh, Tyler Guyton, a uh, tackle out of Oklahoma, still a fringe first-round guy for me. Basically didn't uh, blow me out of the water with any of the athletic testing. 
Uh, Joe Alt tested very, very well, especially for a guy that big. However, he's already a top five prospect, in my opinion. So he really can't get much higher than that. Moving on to the winners of the combine. I've got a long list of winners because I think we have a lot of people perform very well. Uh, Dwayne Carter, an interior defensive line out of Duke, tested very, very well, as did Mohamed Kamara, an edge out of Colorado State. Those two guys I have not watched on the film at all, but their testing numbers were very good. Uh, Edridge and Cooper is someone that I've watched just because I really like him and I've got a fringe first round grade on him probably uh, out of Texas A&M and he tested extremely well for the linebacker position as well. Chris Jenkins low key kind of put on a show at the combine uh, kind of showing why his name was the mutant, especially the bench press with as long as arms as he had. He did really, really well, Quinion Mitchell ran a little bit faster than I thought he was. I thought he was low four fours, high four threes. However, he uh, ran low four threes, so that's good, along with very good agility testing. Ray Davis, I was already higher on him, I think, than most people were, but uh, he really showed up at the combine, especially in the field drills. He looked smooth and athletic, and I think people are going to be coming around on him here pretty soon. Adani Mitchell, who I've been calling A.D. Mitchell for like the past two years, so I got to remember to call him Adani because that's how he wants to be referred to as. Uh, but Adani Mitchell, a wide receiver out of Texas, uh, I think he improved his stock. I did question the long speed a little bit with him because it shows up on film, but there are also distinct times where it doesn't show up on film, like at all. So I don't know if that's uh, he's trying to slow down or if he's kind of giving up on the play or he just knows he's not going to get the ball so why run at full speed I don't know uh, I also don't particularly care because when he thinks he has a chance to get the ball he goes 100 percent and outside of that I don't really care what he does but even in this tier that I've labeled winners there were guys that won more and those guys were Joe Milton quarterback out of Tennessee Xavier Leggett, wide receiver out of South Carolina. Tyler Grabble, tackle slash guard out of UCF. Connor Beebe, guard out of Kansas State. And Kingsley Sua Mataia, a tackle slash guard out of BYU. So Joe Milton, jumping back to the top, I thought looked really good. I think he looked sharp in the throwing drills. And obviously the arm popped and the stature popped. I don't understand why he didn't do the athletic testing, specifically the 40-yard dash, because if he had come out at 6'5 and 235 pounds and ran 4'5 like I think he has the capability of doing, probably high 4'5s, uh, he would have, I think, dramatically increased his draft stock. Because I do think some teams in the later rounds are going to be like, okay, Joe Melton, you can pretend to be a quarterback for a year or two, and then we're moving your ass to tight end. But uh, he decided not to run, which I think is a massive mistake. Like, if you're a good athlete at the quarterback position, this goes for J.J. McCarthy, too. I was very disappointed he didn't run the 40. But it might have been because he put on 20 pounds of muscle and maybe was a little bit slower than he wanted to be. I don't know, but there is nothing that helps your draft stock more than running a good 40 time. Literally nothing that you can do in the offseason that will raise your draft stock more than running a good 40 time at any position. Case and point, Xavier Leggett ran 4.39 at 221 pounds. That is exceptional speed for a guy like that. And he gets to top speed very, very quickly. The agility isn't great, but it is what it is. Uh, this is a straight line Z receiver at the next level. I am very high on Xavier Leggett. I was coming into this process. I had him as a fringe first round kind of guy, and that's pretty much where he's stayed. But a lot of other people are talking about him in that early sort of second round conversation now that he's come out and actually ran for three nine. Uh, Tyler Grabble just tested very well out of UCF, looked good in the drills. Same thing with Connor Beebe. I think Connor Beebe outperformed the expectations for him in the athletic testing. And uh, Kingsley Suomataia was fantastic. He's a very, very good 
athlete, and honestly, he's my dream pick for the Lions in the second round. Probably someone who you can start at left guard day one and potentially develop into a long-term replacement for Taylor Decker. This next tier of guys here are what I refer to as big winners. And these are guys that I think improved their draft stock dramatically in my eyes or in the eyes of the public. Uh, Mechi Wingo, uh, IDL out of LSU. I am going to have to go back and rewatch a lot of his film because I didn't see that athleticism. But I also might have not been paying attention. So he jumped onto my list of need to go back and look at more. Rook or Horhoro, uh, who I hope to God the Lions don't draft because I'm going to struggle with that name until the day I die. I can say a Fatu Melon Fonwu like nobody's business, but Rook or Horhoro fucking just bends me over a table. Anyway, uh, ID out of Clemson. He went from a guy that I probably had like a middle of a day three kind of grade two to like he might legitimately be a top 100 or top 75 guy for me now he has also made the list of uh, guys I need to go back and look at another defensive lineman that also made that list was Miles Cole edge out of Texas Tech he tested very well at the edge rusher position the better your get off or your 10 yard split is the more likely you are to be a productive NFL player and he had a really, really good one. Uh, Jared Verse confirmed to me, maybe a little bit of a hot take, but confirmed to me that he is the edge one of this draft class because he outperformed pretty consistently across the board my expectations for him athletically. Mike Sandersill, I was already very high on him. I'm likely going to end up having a top 50 or potentially even top 40 grade on him as a slot corner at the next level. Marshawn Lloyd, the running back out of USC, was kind of a guy that I had heard a lot of people talk about being like, oh, hey, we really like this guy. And I, I watched him a lot watching uh, Caleb Williams and a couple of the wide receivers for uh, USC this year. Um, he didn't really flash on me, but athletic testing is extremely important to me personally for running backs. Like that's probably the most important position to test well athletically in my opinion uh is the running back position so he really improved his stock i think he is someone who will be able to catch the ball out of the backfield and be very effective in a sort of scat back sort of role trey benson i think has legitimate three down running back like 1500 plus yards 15 touchdowns kind of upside as a running back might end up being my rb one, Dantes Walker uh, it was very important for him to look good catching the football, and he did. He didn't look spectacular. He didn't look like Keon Coleman running through the gauntlet drill or anything, but he looked solid. He had a bad, bad senior bull week. And although I'm not particularly high on him as a Z wide receiver at the next level, uh, I do think he helped himself tremendously with that 4-3-6 40-yard dash. But who were the biggest winners amongst the big winners? And that was, of course, Michael Penix Jr., quarterback out of Washington. Not so much the athletic testing or the on-field stuff for Michael Penix, but the medicals for him came out clear like oh this probably isn't going to be an issue for him at the next level so that is big for me because I don't have access to his medical records or to be able to ask him questions and shit so hearing that was a big deal the fact that like a lot of NFL teams kind of breathed a sigh of relief about this with him uh, that was encouraging to see, and I do think because of that, uh, his grade is likely going to increase, potentially even pushing him into the top 40 grade discussion. Uh, Frank Crum tackle out of Wyoming was a guy that I knew nothing about, and he tested extraordinarily well 
borderline stole the show for the offensive line group. And Christian Jones, tackle out of Texas, went from a guy who was, I think, an early day three pick in my mind to now a guy that I don't think makes it out of the second round of the NFL draft. Now we move on to the final tier, the highest tier. These are guys that stole the show. And starting off, I've got two edge rushers that on day one stole the show. Chop Robinson and Dallas Turner. They're both freaks of nature in terms of their athleticism and explosiveness. They're both guys who had top 20 grades for me heading into this uh, sort of off-season process. And I think they're likely to remain there, if not in the case of Dallas Turner, kind of move up even into the top 10 discussion. Max Melton, a defensive back out of Rutgers. The reason I'm calling him defensive back, not a slot or a corner or a safety, is because I do think he does have a little bit of versatility. But specifically with the athleticism that he tested, he is someone that I would be willing to try on the outside, even though he does have a lighter frame and short arms. So I do think he is someone that I would be willing to let play on the outside early on in his career. And if it works out, great. And if it doesn't, then we can kick him inside or move him to safety so that he can continue playing in the NFL. Theo Johnson in a very, very weak tight end class that had a top two and fuck all after that might have solidified himself as tight end three in the eyes of most of the NFL teams as he tested out very, 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 very well. Like, I think his RAS score, which I have a lot of problems with RAS as a metric of, an, of athleticism, but his RAS score was in the 99.9th percentile of all tight ends in the history of the NFL Combine. So he had a really, really good day. Isaac Garendo, running back out of Louisville, is not someone that I had watched, really. I had watched uh, uh, Jawar Jordan, or Noir Jordan, uh, the other Louisville running back, but I have not really watched Garendo. Need to go back and look at it because this is a guy who's six foot and over 200 pounds and ran 4-3-3. So, yeah, I need to go back and look at at that. And the final guy stole the show that nobody, and I mean nobody, is talking about is Cornelius Johnson out of Michigan stole the show. He went from a guy that I thought was borderline, maybe not even a priority undrafted free agent to like he's going to get drafted maybe early day three, in my opinion, because this is a guy measured six, two and three fourths. So I, I round up at that point. So you're six, three. 215 pounds and you run 445 that's exceptionally good and he jumped out of the gym too he had like a 38 and a half inch vertical his broad was very good we know he blocks because michigan's scheme i think he's a very good route runner and he's gonna play all four special teams for you at the next level this is a guy who i think with this combine performance made himself a lot of money and that's Cornelius Johnson, the wide receiver out of Michigan. Even amongst the guys that stole the show, there were still people that stole the show. Brandon Fisk, an interior defensive lineman out of Florida State, solidified himself as IDL3 in this class for me and has pushed his way into the top 40 back end of the first round discussion. Peyton Wilson might have solidified himself as LB1 for me. It's either him or Edgerton Cooper at this point, uh, but I really liked him on film, and he is a athletic monster. Jalen Wright was a guy that I maybe wasn't that high on him, but he came in 5'11", 200-plus pounds, ran 4'38", Jumped out of the gym, looked really smooth during the field drill segments. His agility testing was also very good. Uh, he rose up the draft board, I think, maybe the most out of any individual prospect for me. I think I had a sixth round grade on him, and now I think I might have a top 75 grade on him. Because the film was really good. I knew he was fast, but I didn't think 4'3 fast, and I didn't think he was that big. Like, I thought he was like 5'9 and 195 pounds. And he came at 5'11, I think, and north of 200. 
So that was really good for him, in my opinion. Tanner Bordolini, guard out of Wisconsin, might have had the best combine performance out of anybody. Because he did all the shit, and he looked great. This is a phenomenal athlete for the guard position, and someone who I think is going to have a pretty good chance to be the first guard taken in this class. And by guard, I mean like true guard. Like Troy Fontenot might end up playing guard, but I think he's going to stay at tackle, actually. But he's someone who could play guard. And Jackson Powers Johnson, who's a center and is probably his best position in my mind, but he's absolutely someone who could play guard as well. Those two guys, I think, probably go before him. But if we're talking about pure guards, he might end up being my number one guy. He might legitimately end up being the first guy off the board. And the last one, obviously... Xavier Worthy stole the show. He broke the 40-yard dash record for the Combine. And because of that, I think he's probably locked himself into the first round somewhere. I am not going to have a first-round grade on Xavier Worthy. Uh, sorry to spoil you. Uh, I'm not going to have a first-round grade on Xavier Worthy. But if I ever do a mock draft, he will be included in the first round because his floor is the Kansas City Chiefs at 32. At least as far as I'm concerned, that's his floor. Last thing I wanted to do here is kind of uh, let you know where I'm at in terms of scouting and stuff. I'm done with quarterbacks. I've done all the work on quarterbacks that I'm going to do for this draft class. I am almost done with wide receivers, offensive tackles, tight ends, and running backs. There's a few tight ends that I need to go back and look at again, and a couple I still need to get to for the first time. Tackles, it's mainly later round guys, I think. All of the day one and day two guys I'm pretty much done with unless I get blown out of the water with somebody down the board. Uh, wide receivers, I've probably got somewhere between 8 and 12 left to do, and those are all late, late round guys, maybe even undrafted sorts. And running backs, there's a couple of people that I need to watch for the first time and a couple of people that I need to go back and look at again. Uh, good and bad. And needs work is basically every single defensive position and the interior of the offensive line because I just haven't gotten to them yet. Like I've done a little bit of work on some guys, but not a whole lot. And uh, I'll hoping to get to them before the end of this month. And now I work like five of the next six days from when I'm recording this, which is uh, Monday morning it's 12 42 a.m but i work the night shift so that's this is when i have time nevertheless i just figured i'd give you an, an update on where i am at scouting uh next video i'm not sure what it's going to be it might be the spencer rattler video it might be something else um i do think that there's a strong possibility that i might lump wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs and, and do like a top 10 and just kind of lump that into one super long video. Or I might make individual videos and go fully down the board. Who knows? It purely depends upon how much time I have and the motivation to do it. But I do want to get out at least a top 10 for every single position before the draft does i also want to do i think maybe one or two mock drafts as well as the spencer rattler quarterback breakdown video but as always everything i've said in this video is just my opinion and what do i know i'm just some asshole on the internet giving you his opinion so at this point i'd like to ask you to like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and if you disagree with me at any point, or you just got something to say, go ahead and drop a comment down in the comment section below. And now with the outro out of the way, there's only one thing left to say, and that's that I'll see you next time.